almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and all evil and confessing our sins with sincere and true heart. We pray together the prayer at the top of page three. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. A few moments of personal reflection of the last week where we need God's forgiveness in our own lives. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let's stand as God's forgiven people and with joy this Easter season sing together the Gloria. Let us pray. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts 
that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Do take a seat for our first reading. The first reading is Psalm 33 and can be found on page 518 of the Old Testament section of the Church Bible. Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with loud shouts for the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness he loves righteousness and justice the earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord by the word of the Lord the heavens were made and all their host by the breath of his mouth he gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle and he put the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the people. The counsel of the Lord stands forever the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading. Uh, the Gospel reading is from John chapter 20 and can be found on page 112 of the New Testament section of the Church Bible. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, 
receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my mark in the mark, put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do sit down. Well, good morning. It's very nice to be here. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Michael Gordon. I'm a member of the congregation here at All Saints, normally appearing at 11 o'clock, but this is a special 9.15 appearance, and I'm delighted to be here. Uh, let me just say a, a little prayer before we begin. Lord God, we gather here and we hope to hear your word to us. So watch over all that I say, that the things that are not of you would just evaporate, and the things that are from you would be uh, heard and attended to. In Jesus' name, amen. That feeling when you realize you've missed out on something really important is horrible, isn't it? And imagine training for the marathon, or even the half marathon, something which I have never done and have no desire to do, and uh, I'm missing out on somebody telling you when the race was. So you've done all that work and you miss it. Uh, I have a recurrent dream, I've had it for years, and I'm in my final year at, at uh, university, and I know that, I know that um, finals are coming up, but I've missed out on somebody telling me what I'm supposed to know and where I'm supposed to be, and who the person is I should go to seek clarification. Uh, and I feel very anxious uh, that I've missed out on something important. And I'm thinking Thomas must have had a sense of that as well when his disciple friends caught up with him in the days following Jesus' crucifixion. Ah, Thomas, it was amazing. We're so sorry you missed it. Uh, we were in the room as usual on the first day of the week, Mind you, we were scared. Uh, there's no telling what they might have done to us if they found, found us. So we locked the doors. Uh, we were a bit bewildered. I mean, what was going to happen next? And then out of nowhere, he must have been able to walk through walls. Jesus just appeared. Well, what did he do? Well, he, he just stood there. Really? Well, how did you know it was him? Well, he showed us his hands and sighed. And did he say anything? Well, yes, he did. We recognized his voice. He said, peace be with you a couple of times. And then he told us, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Was it like a ghost? No, he breathed on us. We felt his breath on us. It was a physical body. He was standing there talking. We could see his wounds, 
And then he breathed us on us and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And you know, everything changed after that. After that moment, it was as if new life had come into us when he breathed. And Thomas said, really? What you're telling me is unbelievable. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. How about that? In the Gospel of John, uh, the first time that Thomas gets a mention is in chapter 11. And uh, in chapter 11, John announce, uh, Jesus announces to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. And this is at a time in Jesus' ministry when things were hotting up a bit, when there was real opposition to be faced. Lazarus uh, was dead, uh, and Thomas seemed to be thinking, I can see where all this is heading. Martyrdom awaits us all. So he says to his fellow disciples in verse 16 of chapter 11, let us go that we may die with him. I don't know how it was at that point, but I wonder whether his friends were called, would have called him straight-talking Thomas, calls a spade a spade. If the sinking ship is going down and the captain's going down with it, then I'm going down too. I'm willing to go down too. The second time Thomas crops up is in chapter 14. I think the first five verses will be pretty familiar to many here but I'll read it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Perhaps at that time his friends called him Thomas, the seeker of clarification. I don't know whether you've been to work meetings or educational meetings, and, and everyone present can predict the person at the end who's got a question for the speaker. I wonder if Thomas was one of those kind of people. Thomas, the seeker of clarification. But uh, church history and tradition has not been so kind to Thomas not for him the positive names that I've suggested, straight-talking Thomas, Thomas the seeker of clarification. No, he's been caricatured and lumbered with the name Doubting Thomas. And it sounds so negative. Why couldn't he just knuckle down and accept what the others told him and not make such a fuss? Unless my conditions are met, I will not believe. I want to suggest to you that living with doubt and uncertainty is an important part of what it means to be human. Not only that, but doubting, questioning, expressing uncertainty is perfectly compatible with ongoing life within the community of God's people. You can still ask questions beyond the Alpha course. It's been said that doubt is not the enemy of faith, but certainty is. And I think there's a certain amount of truth in that. We long for certainty, but we live with uncertainty. The convict goes to prison, often because the jury has decided he is guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Some people look to scientists as the people who will give you some certainty. But if you talk to most scientists, they'll talk about associations, confidence intervals, probability rather than certainty. Of course, certainty is what we long for, but sometimes it can be unhelpful. It can stop us in our tracks. 
it inhibits looking outwards, seeking a better understanding. Uncertainty, on the other hand, requires faith. And a faith that is not blind, but eyes wide open, looking outwards, exploring, listening, thinking, reviewing, amending, developing, growing, creating. But as I said earlier, we all long for certainty. And in this passage, the disciples were given the gift of certainty on the central question of who Jesus was. They all left that room in Jerusalem certain that Jesus had risen from the dead in bodily form. And for us too, these are foundational matters that I believe we can be certain about. God loves us. He sent his son to die on the cross and raised him from the dead. However, there are other matters within what I might call biblical Christianity where blessing is to be found in questioning, reading, discussing, perhaps adopting a different perspective and a new practical approach. But you might say, well, what about those who have real doubts about the fundamentals of Christian faith? Well, something to note from this passage is that Thomas came back to meet the others the next week after he missed out. He continued in relationship with the others. He remained a part of this new community because that was who he was. He was part of it. These were his people, and they were people who loved him. God's desire, I believe, is not for us that we should be black and white in our thinking, demanding certainty on every doctrinal and ethical issue. His desire is rather that we become part of the body of Christ, part of the church community. Verse 24 refers to Thomas as Didymus, which I think is the Greek word for twin. And the New Testament doesn't tell us who his twin was. Some commentators have suggested that he didn't have a twin. It was because he was He resembled Jesus so much that they referred to him as as though he was Jesus' twin. And that may be the case. But when I read about Thomas in John's Gospel, I rather like Thomas. And I like him because he seems a lot like me, like us, straight-talking Thomas. Thomas, the seeker of clarification. Sometimes doubting, sometimes uncertain. He seems to be cut from the same cloth as the rest of us. Maybe he is a twin to all the people in subsequent generations who feel they missed out. Time and geography got in the way. People like us who, as verse 29 puts it, have have not seen and yet have come to believe. And Jesus loves Thomas. He does not leave him paralyzed by doubt over the question of the resurrection, but in his own time responds And verse 24 onwards tells us what happened. A week after the risen Christ appeared to the disciples in that locked room, he appeared a second time, seemingly especially for Thomas. And he comes with the familiar words, peace be with you. The very words the troubled Thomas needed to hear at that time. And he says to Thomas, do not doubt, but believe. I don't think Thomas took Jesus up on the invitation. Was he really going to poke around in the tender wounds and cause his Lord and Savior further pain? I doubt it. I think more likely he recoiled at the prospect. But Thomas' reaction is significant. Thomas, remember, was the straight talker. And I think he was overwhelmed, maybe lost for words. All that is recorded of what he says is, my Lord and my God. I wonder if some of us sometimes look around at others and their experience as Christians and seek a fuller reality and long for a fresh encounter with God. Maybe it's been a long time since we've had an arresting experience of God's presence but I think we should feel free to seek 
to ask, to look for. God is pressing into our world, wanting to be encountered. We need to be willing to wait. We need to perhaps be willing to expect an encounter of a different kind in a different context. What is Jesus doing here in this story? One of the big themes in the Bible is setting the captives free. And I'm sure as you think back over Old Testament stories and individual characters in the Old Testament, not forgetting Jonah and the whale, there are plenty of examples that will come to mind of release and freedom. And here in the resurrection of Jesus, we have the ultimate and fullest expression of release, freed from a tomb on the third day, freed from death, unable to come to the disciples. Disciples who were trapped in a locked room um, until they encountered the risen Christ who came to them with peace be with you and an empowering, life-giving breath and Holy Spirit. I wonder again if any of you feel enclosed or trapped in need of liberation or release into some sort of fuller life to hear Jesus say to you, peace be with you, and to know the life-giving breath of the Holy Spirit. It's here in a community like this, among believers like these, that these things, I believe, become more possible. This story of Thomas with his doubt settled and certainty received only appears in John's gospel. And it's included there for one main reason. Verse 31 tells us, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. I'm sure you join with me in looking forward in faith to the day when every knee will bow and every tongue confess as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. Just to finish with, I want to read you a poem. It's by a fellow called Malcolm Geit, who I think is quite famous, but I don't think I'd heard of him before. Maybe some of you have. Uh, let me read it to you. <clears throat> we do not know, how can we know the way? Courageous master of the awkward question, you spoke the words others dared not say and cut through their evasion and abstraction. O oh, doubting Thomas, father of my faith, you put your finger on the nub of things. We cannot love some disembodied wraith but flesh and blood must be our king of kings. Your teaching is to touch, embrace, anoint, feel after him and find him in the flesh. Because he loved your awkward counterpoint, the word has heard and granted you your wish. O oh, place my hands with yours. Help me divine the wounded God whose wounds are healing mine. Amen. Thank you, Michael. That the the place of doubt is not the enemy of faith, but the place and the springboard for it. Let's stand together and sing at the feet we fall, mighty risen Lord. Let's stand together. <clears throat>
As we continue to stand, we turn to page seven in our red books. We affirm our faith in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, who in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do take a seat as Eric comes to lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray, bringing to God our grateful thanks, our hopes and needs, and let us be open to him who both listens and speaks to us. At this time, we are still very much celebrating the joy of the risen Lord. May that joy be with you, with us, as we go through the weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yet, Father, while we have joy in our hearts, we pray too for our hurting world and all its peoples, which is, in, which is so much in need of the joy, love, and truth of the risen Lord. For we cannot escape seeing the horrors of wars and the wanton destruction of homes, the infrastructure, the essential necessities hitting innocent people. The world does not feel very safe right now with the escalation of conflict in the Middle East, with much needed aid being disrupted and other Middle East nations being drawn into the conflict and what might be quite possibly another war. We are aware of the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine with no end in sight. We are too aware of the many other trouble spots which are not reported as widely and in all cases where diplomatic solutions are being discounted. But we pray that the people who are suffering will be given care, support and healing from their trauma. Please protect all your children, young and old, who are vulnerable to the effects of war and displacement from their homes. May they come to experience your peace. We ask that you grant wisdom and integrity to those world leaders who still strive for peace, so they will work for the good of the people they govern and serve. As nations experience the undermining of so much that they once felt secure ground. May people turn to you as never before. May they find your salvation and the security of your unshakable kingdom. And we remember too those caught up in natural disasters, earthquakes and the like, who are in need of care, support and healing again from their trauma. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. In praying for nations, Father, we lift our nation to you. Give wisdom and authority to all, sorry, give wisdom and integrity to all in authority. And amidst the pressures brought upon them, may they follow your guidance and seek to do the things that are right and for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. <laughs> well, in this Easter se well, still in this Easter season, we pray for the preparations for the upcoming Young People's Easter House Party, that many young people will come to know and love you. And we pray, for, too, for other initiatives, including the Women's Ministry Evening and others. We thank you, too, for the other activities in this church which serve the community in so many ways. So, Lord, we lift to you the ministry team and all involved in ministry in this church. Keep them close to you. Encourage them with your Holy Spirit as they share your ministry, proclaiming your love and power. And we are mindful, too, of our mission partners. Bless and protect them and their families in their work in bringing your kingdom to the people to whom they minister and serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are acutely aware of those of our number who are extremely unwell. Comfort them and their loved ones at this difficult time. And we also bring before you those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit and need your healing touch. May your blessing rest on them and those who are on our hearts, for in you there is hope, healing, and joy. Give comfort and courage for those who mourn the loss of loved ones still. May they find their peace and hope in you, the resurrection and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And close to home, today we pray for those running in the marathon, for their chosen charities. Keep them safe. Inspire them to keep going when they may feel that they have reached the end of their endurance. Keep them safe. And as we pray for ourselves, Father, we thank you for the love with which you have filled our lives and for the love we have received from those around us. We give thanks for those whose love and compassion has been a reflection of your love. And we thank you most of all for the life of your son, Jesus, and how he reflects your love, the love which never lets us go, never lets us down, and for the hope that burns within us. Father, to help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A merciful Father, we ask you accept these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Eric, for leading us in those prayers. Before we come to communion, just a couple of notices. I hope you grabbed a notice sheet on your way in and you've been able to, to, to scan through it. Just a few things. On the table at the back, there are a number of um, additional uh, pieces of paper for you to, to uh, notice and grab relevant ones. Um, on the 23rd of April, there's going to be a great women's event. Hannah Sandoval, who works for the diocese, will be coming to speak um, with the women of this church. Uh, do pick up a leaflet for details for that. Um, also, at the end of April, there's going to be a men's event, Axes and Arrows. You can guess what's going to happen at that event. Um, and in May time, we will be having a sharing your faith wherever you are, whatever you do um, through the week. Uh, and there's going to be three different events, but it's going to be the same event at three different times. Uh, they'd love to hear um, questions that you might have specific to your own uh, environment. Um, do pick up uh, 
that leaflet uh, and put one in your diary. Uh, commit to coming along to one of them. And finally, um, as Eric prayed for our house party, we'll be um, heading off on Wednesday. It's uh, close to Thursk, um, just west of the North York Moors. Uh, it's going to be a brilliant uh, youth center that they're heading up to. Um, and thank you for the prayers that you've been praying already. Uh, I do continue to be praying for them, but we've got a special prayer event at Werlow Spirituality Center tomorrow evening, and that is at 7 p.m. over at Werlow Spirituality. Everyone welcome. If you'd like to, to pray for them as, and send them off in God's blessing. Do come along to that if you can, but do continue to pray for them over this coming week as well. Would you stand with me for the peace? As we heard in that gospel reading, Jesus came amongst his disciples and he gave them his peace. And it was that that transformed them, uh, gave them boldness, uh, and gives us boldness too. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with those around us a sign of that peace. You to stand. Let's pray together. Uh, sing together. There is a hope that burns within my heart. Let's sing.
give thanks for all the gifts cheerfully given to the work of this church, that God's kingdom might come in this place. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We turn in our red books to page 22, and we pray Eucharistic Prayer B this morning. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. We take a seat and we turn to page 12. And as our Savior taught us, so we pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Lord God, our Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We say together our prayer after communion on page 16. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our final hymn. Alleluia, alleluia, hearts to heaven and voices raised. Let's stand. Easter season, may you know God's peace. This Easter season with the disciples, may you say, we have seen the Lord. And this Easter season, like Thomas, may you say, my Lord and my God. If after the service you would value prayer ministry, will it be by the cross? This morning it will be behind me to uh, gather there uh, and Pray with another if you would value it this morning. God's blessing as we go from our time of gathering this morning. May God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and in love. May he defend you on every side and may he guide you in truth and in his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.